What up, y'all? This is your boy, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report for Wednesday, October 1st, 2014, delivering some of the major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook or on Twitter, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, or on Twitter at the Enter Report. You can listen to the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello anytime around the world on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeartRadio and search for the Entertainment Report, and it will automatically take you to the page. Congratulations to Mina Kunis and Aniston Kushner. They became officially parents today. The engaged couple and former Dead 70s uh, show co-stars have welcomed a baby girl, a source confirmed to E! News. According to TMZ, which was first to report the news, their daughter arrived Tuesday night at Los Angeles Cedar sinai Medical Center. The two were most recently spotted walking their dog on an afternoon hike near their home in Los Angeles on September 27th with a very pregnant Kunis holding hands with her husband-to-be. And earlier this month, uh, Kutcher revealed on Twitter that he was anxiously waiting the arrival of his little girl, saying, nervous is excited, victim sister. In the days and weeks leading up to the birth, Kunis has been spending some extra one-on-one time with her fiancé. From late-night dinner dates to afternoon trips at the dog park, the couple truly savored the final weeks of pregnancy. As I was told, E! News, shortly before the brunette beauty gave birth, Ashton is not letting Mila out of sight. They're spending every moment together. He can't wait. Congratulations to them. Comedian Adam Sandler will star in and produce four original movies exclusively for Netflix. Under the deal, the actors Happy Madison Productions will develop and produce the films with Netflix. They will become available exclusively to members of the streaming service in the 50 countries in which it operates. The deal excludes projects that are part of the production company's current studio film commitments. Um, uh, Netflix chief content officer uh, Ted Sardanos said in a statement, people love Adam's films on Netflix and often watch them again and again. His appeal spans across viewers of all ages. Everybody has a favorite movie. Everyone has a favorite line, not just in the U.S., but all over the world. Sandler offered this humorous statement. He said, one of these fine people came to me with an offer to make four movies for them. I immediately said yes for one reason, one reason only. Netflix rhymes with wet chicks. Let the stream begin. The actor has started numerous films, including Happy Gilmore, Big Daddy, Punch Drunk Love, and the Grown Ups franchise. He'll soon be back on the big screen with two upcoming films, Men, Women, and Children, and The Cobbler, which premiered at the 2014 Toronto Film Festival. His movies have grossed more than $3 billion at the box, at the box office worldwide. Deuce Bigelow, 51st, uh, 51st Dates, and Anger Management are among many movies produced by Happy Madison. It's among the producers of ABC's The Goldbergs and CBS's Rules of Engagement. As Sardana's inferred in his statement, this deal represents Netflix's ability to carefully choose its partnership with information from its members' viewing habits. According to the streaming video service, Sandler is among the few actors in the world who choose films consistently rank among the most viewed by Netflix members in the U.S. and across its global territories from Brazil to the U.K., News of the deal arrives on the heels of Tuesday's groundbreaking announcement that Netflix and the Weinstein Company have partnered to release the Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon sequel simultaneously in theaters and on the serving service on the steam, streaming service. The first of its kind, many IMAX theater operators have vowed not to show the sequel in their theaters. Netflix looks to sim, to simulate the success it has had with TV series such as House of Cards and Orange is the New Black with this push into original movies. Rapper Jay-Z is melding with Fusion. Digital Network Fusion will air a series of Jay-Z's Life and Time Presents specials, the network said Wednesday. The specials hails from Jay-Z's Life Plus Times, an online hub that uh, curated by Jay-Z and operated by Rock Nation and Iconic Entertainment. The online destination, quote, features in-depth music, sports, and lifestyle pieces on an array of subjects, Fusion said. Fusion will begin by airing episodes from Jay-Z's Life Plus Times, Where I'm From documentary series, which plans to present other programming from Jay-Z's Life Plus Time in the future. 
The Where I'm From series offers the behind the scenes look at athletes and entertainers, from Jay Z to football players Hakeem Nix to baseball player Robinson Cano. The Nix installment will be the premiere episode on Fusion, with the premiere to be announced at a later date. Jay Z's Life Plus Times content is a natural fix for Fusion's millennial audience. Fusion CEO Isaac Lee said of the partnership, the series will give our viewers intimate access to the cultural tastemakers that reflect this generation's diverse interests and passions. Tom and Jerry is getting a warning about possibly being racist. The classic cat and mouse cartoon from the 1940s now comes with a disclaimer on Amazon Prime Instant saying that the animated series may contain scenes of, quote, ethic and racial prejudice. Uh, it says Tom and Jerry shorts may depict some ethnic and racial prejudices that were once commonplace in American society, the disclaimer states. Uh, such as uh, depictions were wrong then and are wrong today. This is not the first time. Tom and Jerry cartoons have been slapped with a disclaimer. In a previous release DVD from Warner Brothers Home a Video, a warning appears on screen informing viewers that some of the cartoons show racial and gender stereotypes. The DVD also contains an introduction from Whoopi Goldberg explaining why producers decide not to remove the offensive scenes from the re-release. The Tom and Jerry episodes include in this collection comes to us from a time when racial and ethnic uh, differences were a caricature in the name of entertainment, Goldberg said. These prejudices were wrong then and they are wrong today. The cartoon's depiction of black, black maids, Mammy Two Shoes, has been the strongest point of contention through the history of the animated shorts. Um, Goldberg explains in her on-screen warning, removing Ma Mammy Two-Shoes would be the same as pretending she never existed. The same is true for the other images and jokes we, would n we wouldn't normally include in a mainstream cartoon today. Members of Facebook who wish to use chosen names in their profiles may soon be able to do so following a meeting on Wednesday. A representative from the Transgender Law Center told the rap in a statement, we have a very productive meeting with Facebook today in which they apologize for the way the situation has been handled. They committed to make changes to the way they enforce their real name policies to ensure that folks who need to use chosen names that reflect their authentic selves online are able to do so. Facebook had previously deleted several accounts belonging to individuals who weren't using their legal names, many of whom are drag performers and members of the uh, LGBT community. Um, the representative said what made clear today is that Facebook is ready to collaborate with our communities and share our value of making sure everyone is able to safely be their authentic self online. While the policy has still not been changed, Facebook is considering changing how they enforce it. Uh, Facebook's vice president of product, Chris Cox, said in an online statement, our policy has never been to require everyone on Facebook to use their legal name. The spirit of our policy is that everyone on Facebook use the authentic name they use in real life. Cox continued, uh, we see through this event that there's a lot, lots of room for improvement in the reporting and enforcement mechanisms, tools for understanding who's real and who's not, and the customer service for anyone who's affected. To everyone affected by this, thank you for working through this and with us and helping us to improve the safety and authenticity of the Facebook experience for everyone. Bravo announced Wednesday its new cast for Season 7 of its Smash franchise, The Real Housewives of Atlanta. After creating a star on Season 6 of the show, Portia Williams is not returning in the upcoming season as a main cast member. Instead, she will have a recurring role on the series which will chronicle her newly single life as she takes up a job as a gossip reporter. Her opponent and sworn enemy, Kenya Moore, is returning with the leading storyline along with four veteran housewives, Nene Leakes, Candy um, Burris, uh, Fadria Parks, and Cynthia Bailey. As witnessed in the Season 6 reunion of Real Housewives of Atlanta, Moore and Williams got into a vicious brawl which resulted in Williams dragging Moore across the stage. The ladies will also welcome newcomer media maven Claudia Jordan, who is close pals with Moore. Another new face, Demetria McKinley, will also have a recurring role on the show, like Williams. Us Weekly exclusively revealed last month that the entire season um, six casts would return for Real Housewives of Atlanta's new season, along with newcomers Jordan and McKinley. 
Season 7 storylines previewed by Bravo include Atlanta's longest-running housewife leagues uh, juggling her growing career as an actress and performer. The show will also follow Parks dealing with the aftermath of her husband, Apollo Nita's incarceration, incarceration after he was sentenced to eight years in prison this past summer for fraud. The new season premieres Sunday, November 9th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Bravo. R&B singer Jason Derulo is still talking about his split with uh, pop, pop singer Jordan Sparks, and this time he's admitting he called it quits with the song's stress over the phone almost three years together. And no, in case you were wondering, Derulo said it wasn't their sex life that was to blame for the split. After denying again that he was unfaithful, the singer told Power 105.1's DJ Envy that their relationship simply ran at its course. Uh, he said every relationship has their, has their ups and downs, and you know, when you start having more downs than ups, you've got to take a look at your relationship and be like, is this something that I'm supposed to be doing? He explained during the interview on Wednesday. While the writing solo singers have uh, been vocal about the split, he got even more candid with the DJ. It wasn't a problem in that area at all, the ruler said in response to a joke about his and Sparks' sex life. Yeah, our sex life was fine, he added. Now the single 25-year-old who penned the song Marry Me for Sparks last year went on to admit that he called the quiz with Sparks over the phone because he wasn't in town. Sparks, for her part, has been taking the split in stride telling Huda um, Cobb and K Kathy Lee Griffin in an interview. I'm good, actually. I read this quote yesterday, and it said, when something unexpected happens in your life or you think something bad happens, just say plot twist and move on. When asked by Wendy Williams if Derulo cheated on her, however, Sparks said, I actually don't want to comment on that, and added that when it comes to the BMW he gifted her with, he can have it. Big Brother Season 8 winner Dick Donato is HIV positive and revealed his diagnosis on Wednesday's episode of Couples Therapy on VH1. People broke the news ahead of the latest episode of the reality show in which he is joined by girlfriend Stephanie Rognes Fish, um, Fisher and a number of other reality stars, including The Bachelors, Juan Pablo Galvanis. Uh, Donato, nicknamed Evil Dick, told people, Look, I get that I'm a reality show villain, but for better or for worse, I have a platform. I decided that it was time to just publicly say what I'm dealing with. Uh, he also added, On one hand, I'm doing this for myself. I'm, I don't want to hide anymore. On the other hand, I hope it will remind viewers to get tested, practice safe sex, all those things we know in the back of our minds but maybe don't do. After I told everyone a couple's uh, therapy, I had two production people pull me aside and said that, that they had gotten tested. I feel like I can do some good. Donato was diagnosed while filming six, season 13 of Big Brother in 2011, does not know how he contracted the virus that causes AIDS, but believe it was the result of unprotected sex with a woman. And I said, people are going to make assumptions about how I got it. People are afraid to come forward because they're afraid of the stigma of HIV. I'm not gay. I've never stick a, uh, stuck a needle in my arm. But at this point, it doesn't matter. We create a stigma around the disease that makes it hard for people to publicly say they have it. Although Donato told his mother and girlfriend immediately, he admits he, too, was afraid to tell too many people about his condition for years. Um, he also added, I went to a clinic that had a big sign that said HIV, and I thought, what if someone sees me? My computer and router were hacked, and I was afraid that someone would leak the information. He also added, I came up with excuses, people wondering why I was taking medicine regularly. When people asked me why I left the uh, Big Brother, I would give quippy, smart-ass answers. Reality fans will find out the truth about his abrupt Big Brother departure when Couples Repeat, ther uh, Couples Therapy airs on VH1 at 9 p.m. on Thursday night. And finally, director David Fincher and Ben Affleck's Gone Girl and the horror film Annabelle are both looking powerful going into what should be an exciting box office race this weekend. Bet on the, the dark thriller about a man who becomes a, a suspect in his wife's murder, say the analysts, who project an opening in the $30 million range for Fox and the Regency's Gone Girl, and sees a three-day total of around $25 million for Warner Brothers' Annabelle. It's a tricky race to call for weeks. The spinoff from last year's breakout hit, The Conjuring, has been tracking ahead of the mature skewing thriller based on Gillian Flynn's bestseller, but both in the low to mid $20 million range. 
Both distributors are far more conservative and are projecting 20 million opening weekends. But online ticket broker Fandango reported on Wednesday that advanced sales for Gone Girl were surging and similar to those of Gravity, which opened to $55.7 million last October. No one is projecting that sort of debut for Gone Girl, but the numbers suggest it will be among the biggest October openings ever. Its sales are ahead of Paranormal Activity 3, which made $52 million, Jackass 3D, which made $50 million, and Taken 2, which made $49 million. Uh, Boxoffice.com Vice President and Senior Analyst uh, Phil Contrino said, Traditional tracking hasn't been all that reliable lately, and some films defy conventional wisdom. This absolutely feels like one of those, in part because of its older target audience, which is far tougher to track reliability. Advanced online sales are just one of the box office tea leaves, of course, but the numbers are stark. Gone Girl represents 66% of Fandango's weekend's ticket sales on Wednesday morning, while Annabelle and the weekend's other wide opener, Nicholas's Cage's Faith Base Left Behind, represents 13% and 8% of sales, respectively. At MovieTickets.com, Gone Girl was at 22%, while Annabelle was at 6 Contrino also adds, never underestimate underestimate the appeal of smart, well-made adult thriller. They don't come along that often when they do, they score. The critics are crazy about the Fincher-directed Gone Girl, which is nearly 9% positive on review aggregation site Rotten Tomatoes. Ro uh, Rosamund Pike, Neil Patrick Harris, and Tyler Perry co-star in the film, which has a $61 million production budget and was produced by Aaron Mi uh, Milchan, Joshua Donnan, Reese Witherspoon, and Sean Chafin. It's very likely both movies are going to score, in part because they're different audiences, though both are rated R. Annabelle skewer, skews younger and shouldn't cut much into the Gone Girl audience. Annabelle is searching on social media on Facebook. It has five times the likes that The Conjuring had, and that one opened to $41.8 million last July. Both movies will be on more than 3,000 screens, freestyle uh, releasing, We'll have the PG-13 rated left behind in roughly 1,750 theaters. We'll find out who was on top this weekend. And that is your entertainment report for Wednesday, October 1st, 2014. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow delivering some of the major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook or on Twitter, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O. Or on Twitter at the enter report. You can listen to the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello anytime, anywhere around the world on iHeartRadio. You can just go to iHeartRadio's website and search for the Entertainment Report, and it will take you to the page, and you can listen to this episode and all previous episodes of this program. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.